like to dedicate this episode to my friend Arthur, who has just recently turned 70, and he has taught me many things, but some of them I'll share with you. He's taught me never to give up, and he's going through a tough time himself, and um, so is Loretta, so thinking of you both, but uh, probably the most important one for my viewers is that he taught me and encouraged me to learn how to fix things myself. And because of that, I'm now able to help others uh, through this medium of YouTube. So I've managed to sail across a few oceans and I just simply couldn't have done it without his support in many ways. So I thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Loretta. And um, I hope to see you soon. Dropped the anchor last night and we're in this beautiful place. This is uh, close to Carayas. There's a lot of uh, little coletas or coves um, that give us the opportunity for a bit of shelter. And uh, you can see it's about as sheltered as you get. It's not much wind outside. That's the open ocean in between the two rocks there on the horizon. But you can see we're very sheltered, anchored at about six meters here. Beautiful little beach that at high tide is impossible to get to unless you've got a little dinghy. But you can see yesterday we've uh, been doing a bit of fishing and rather successfully we've got a very large tuna and uh, a small bonito as well. So the dinghy's deployed and we dragged the dinghy all the way because I knew the weather was going to be good. So we've resupplied for, um, we've got enough supplies to keep us going for a couple of weeks at least. As long as we catch some fish that are washing out. I thought I'd show you. I'm just about to engage some of these guys. Which are my spinning rods. And they're a little bit more fragile. So I keep them underneath the um, this awning. I suppose you could call it. And a lot of people ask. Why don't I have some sort of handle or grab rail there? Well you can see quite clearly. You don't really need it. Because if you, you can put your hands underneath and grab as you walk along like this. So you can save yourself a bit of money. And aluminium is quite expensive. But yeah, these spinning rods, I have one here, and this one here is for uh, sardines and quite cheap, but still good. And the other two are actually capable of uh, catching um, some pretty impressive uh, mahi-mahi and predatory fish. So, yep. And then uh, what we might do also is we might leave Elba inside and then go diving because the water is about as clear as it gets in the Pacific here. A very very special place. So we've actually been here before and we decided to come back. So yeah, so we'll probably be filling up the dive cylinders, run the generator, fill up the dive cylinders and then uh, go for a dive. Just over here we got uh, some king crayfish the last time we were here and so yeah. One of the questions I get asked quite a lot is how does it feel the motion of the boat under anchor? Well, you can see we've got a little bit of a little bit of a very small amount of swell, but of course you you, you can't see it on the camera. It's a, just a tiny little bit of swell rolling in this anchorage. But for me, that's absolutely uh, no difference really from any other stable boat. I find it very good. Um, and now, of course, our mast is, is, is taller than most boats because you've got more sail area. So that means you'll, you might see the, um, the mast, the top of the mast move more than, say, an equivalent size catamaran. And uh, so, you know, there's a, another chap who reviews and sells only catamarans, seems to think his point is that, that the Neil 51 is not a stable under anchor. Well, as I've said before, I just think that's total rubbish. But uh, yeah, you can see, dog's very happy. Eva's very happy sitting there under the sink watching me, wondering what the hell I'm doing. But yeah, very comfortable. And so I'm just gonna take the dinghy around and I'll show you what it's like from the front too.
Alba thinks I'm gonna forget her for a walk. So she's wondering what Dad's doing. But I've just done a buzz round with the dinghy, and you can see it's moving very, very little, the main ship itself. But what I also, while I'm here, I'm gonna show you how my snubber works. So this is my, the, you can see quite clearly there's a piece of nylon. And if I go close to my chain, you can see that chain hook is there. So let me get away. There you go. There's my, it's very heavy at the moment, but there it is. My snubber attached to the chain and that takes the strain. All of the strain of the boat at the moment is on this snubber. And uh, so on both sides, see that's how a good snubber works so both sides the strain is on that chain hook and those two cleats in the middle and so having the two um, two lines just helps the cleat and also helps stop sailing things around anchor but yeah all that chain all the stress is taken off that chain now and therefore it's taken off the windlass, you know, the, the, the winch which pulls up the chain. If I do this right, I should be able to, to jump up. Tie me on, you can see what I've got here. Just a really quick setup, and that good thick nylon. I've just set up something like this. You've got to be careful, I won't leave it like this for a long time because you can chafe, these can chafe through. But this is the best way. I do just keeping keeping the dinghy on and turn this around. You see, it hasn't chafed at all, really. So you can tow the boat quite nicely, little dinghy quite nicely with that setup. If I was going to haul it for a long time, I'd take one from there too, so that you have the two joining, give it a bit of distance. So then the big swell, if you if the big swell comes, it doesn't hit the the back of the the transom of the the main ship. Now, if you're thinking to to buy one of these or even if I was going to do it again, I definitely would change that ladder. And I actually added one of those just to make it look nice, but that was a, that was a foolish thing to do. I prefer uh, a better quality ladder than those ones. So very important. Ladders are not really satisfactory, to be honest. Definitely not good for kids. And one of the other things is, highly recommend you don't teach a dog to jump off a boat because as soon as you go ashore without telling the dog or tying the dog up, she'll jump off the boat and try and swim to you. So we try not to, to teach her to, to jump off the main ship. She has to jump onto the dinghy first, which is very dirty. Jump onto the dinghy first and then she can jump in the water. What is going on here? So this is a good trick. I've propped up the ladder with the broom handle. Chop done. But I've taken this front panel off the Jan set because of course it was 38 celsius nearly 40 degrees today and today my generator decided that it doesn't want to run the aircon anymore so there's a bit of water down here like i told you before um my little suction pump um this yellow one's okay but it needs a lot of water to work but um yeah so my the usual one which is this one here um and that little Little pump over there the fuse is gone of course so I can't pump all that water out but that's fine it's fine that's a different job but what I want to show you is this so I've taken the front panel which is this off and this is little locking thing is to keep the front panel off now if you have difficulty doing this and taking that front panel off stop and get an engineer um, but anyway so the next the next step is I, I know from the signal there's a flashing lights on this little panel here when it was working, I think it was seven flashes that there's no raw water supply. And I know from experience that it's probably something to do with the impeller. So this is the impeller, takes the seawater in and then turns it around, does some sort of wizardry and cools down the engine and goes back out again. Anyway, so um, I've got to fix the impeller and I luckily have a spare because I've been through this all before. Now, before you even start any of this job, there's one thing that you've got to make sure that you do. You've got to make sure, first of all, that you've got hands of kryptonite. And then the second thing you've got to do is you've got to find the all-elusive number 10. 
because if you go to a DIY store and you see a number a number 10 like this, buy three of them because it's always the one that you need and you can never find. So that's, that's, that's a little bit of advice for you. And now why I say you need the hands of kryptonite because some genius engineer has actually left it so that I can't just use my normal um, you know, ratchet wrench in here. I actually have to do the very tedious task of, of doing it bit by bit because I can't even get this, this, um, you, you see the way that I can't even get that round, you see? Yeah, so that, that's just only a little bit irritating. So that means I can't just get, you know, a normal ratchet set or whatever in, very irritating. So yeah, bang on number 10. So I've kind of got this one out already. Um, and there's another one there, another one there. So if anybody knows anybody from Monan Cummins, um, can you um, send them my way for gender reassignment? That'd be great. Uh, but anyway, just joking. But yeah, so I'm going to take this piece off first and then uh, um, you can imagine it's 40 degrees outside and the generator's been running to try and keep the air, the air con cool. So I reckon it's about 60 degrees in here. So you'll not be surprised to know that I have the all important emergency supply of beer. Yeah, not sponsored by, but yeah, you've got to have one of these just in case. So you can see now I've got the, uh, that's the impeller off and pretty hard to show you with the camera lens uh, but that's the impeller um obviously the the actual fins are broken off that's like a little um let's see it's a little gasket there which trying to get the impeller back in the right angle get that gasket on and uh, get those three screws see these ones these bolts really these bolts trying to get those three guys in all simultaneously um like I said, requires hands of kryptonite, but it's been done before, so I can do it again. But yeah, I'm not really sure why that that um, impeller got so nailed like that. But it's a very, very, very hot day, and the sea sea temperature is very hot, so that might have something to do with it. But um, job's not done yet. Just gonna let the engine cool down. This this gen generator engine to cool down. Um, it's too hot to handle, really. So let it cool down a little bit more, and. Uh, and come out the other side let's see now the other thing is just while I'm here you notice that's a blue filter that's a blue filter from those are basically generics that copies of the original Onan's come in filters from a company called Sierra uh, what you want to do if you're gonna buy any boat is have at least two or three years worth of filters uh, before you go now I'm gonna show you as another sneaky hack here See this here, this is basically, that is just a, a, you know, a, a, a diesel filter. You've got to find out the spec of it. But as long as you've got the right microns, you could probably change that for, if you were really stuck and say out in the middle of the Pacific somewhere, you could change that whole section, this whole section up and change it for a filter housing that you have or that you can find somewhere. You know, just that just needs to be the same spec of filter, like whatever it is, five micron, I think it is. So that'd be worth checking out. If you're really, really snookered, you can change this whole housing here. Sorry, I'll just get the camera in a better angle. So you could change this whole housing here and therefore you could put your filter on because that just that just clips in, that's your in and out, but you can actually tell you um, on, on, the, uh, on the housing. So yeah, um, that, that, that's worth thinking about. You know, if you get really snookered or this is a really hard to find filter, you could probably just take something of the same spec and change it out. Similarly, there's my oil filter over there, right in the middle of the, the camera is the oil filter. And then uh, done it before. This see this little hose here. What you do is you pull that out, and drop it down, and that's where you're going to suck all your oil out for when you're servicing it. And um, so not not really that complex, but one thing that I'm now very frustrated at at this design. Although I think I do think this is a, great, a very quiet generator and otherwise pretty reliable. So. This is this is the problem with all marine engines. You're going to have an impeller. Now, obviously, this impeller is you can see that's just wasted. Um, there we go. We're going to take it off. That is just absolutely wasted. Look at that. So, I'm going to replace that. Like, thankfully, I've got a spare because I know this how how annoying this is. Um, but you've got to make sure that you've got spares like this before you go any sort of you know very large uh, distances away from civilization so yeah keep loads of these and you should be able to get a spare 
gasket and all that sort of stuff with the engine. But the really irritating thing is that the, bit, the pieces that broke off this will now end up going downstream and the heat exchanger is downstream on the other side. So I'm going to have to now open up this other panel and try and fish out the little fins on that impeller. Um, because if they get wedged even further up the heat exchanger, it's just a nightmare. I have to dismantle the heat exchanger. So, yeah, not easy. Um, really irritating. And you would have thought that when they were designing something like this, any sort of civilized person would have probably put some sort of gauze or something to stop these broken elements going downstream. don't know why they didn't do that. Um, I'm not a um, mechanical engineer, but um, I'm a doctor, and we probably do something similar. Just makes it easier for yourself, right? But uh, obviously they're selling these engines. It's a good one, though. I have to say, the Q Onan Cummins, I don't have much experience with something like Fisher Panda, but, you know, she's, she's a big old generator. But um, I'd be interested to see how the other, other, other companies deal with that. There you go. Be careful. A lot of mechanics as well will say, yeah, I fixed your impeller for you. All's working. It's great. But obviously, if you've got little pieces like that stuck inside your heat exchanger, it's not as efficient, is it? So, and as soon as, um, sorry, I'm, it's really, really hot down here, so I'm breathing heavily, but, you know, it'll work, but it's not as efficient, right? So if you're in the tropics like I am now, um, it'll not be, it'll not cool the engine as, as, as well. Now, the other thing is, um, you've got to get these fins the right way around, and it's kind of difficult for me to show you um, inside this housing. But you can see inside this housing, I'm going to have to get them, um, you know, they, they bend basically. They bend like this inside the housing. You've got to make sure that you've got them the right way around. Because um, otherwise, if you don't, you break an impeller, you've got to start all over again. So yeah, soul destroying work. This is, as you can expect, this is one of my least favorite jobs on board. Um, apart from bo broken heads or blocked heads. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. So... I've got managed to get the three screws. You can see them of the triangle, uh, triangle shape. If I move these white cables aside, got the three in. That one's really difficult to get in. And I've even got that little gas gasket in. That's kind of like stainless gasket. So yeah, I've got the three in. Got the this little jobby job aligned. The little that's a little tooth that's aligned. Um, but what I'm not entirely certain about. Um, is the direction that the teeth bend in the mix. I noticed the last time I did it, I didn't hear as much water passing through the impeller the last time. So I'm gonna try the opposite direction. So the so when I mean the opposite direction, the, rather than the teeth turning that way on the impeller, this time I'm turning them the other way. And I uh, hope that's gonna work. So we'll see. We'll see, otherwise I've gotta do it all again. Um, but. I'm not sure that I've got a spare impeller. I might be really lucky and look through my supplies and see what I've got. Uh, but that's only half the story. I've still got to do the, the heat exchanger. So see you on the other side. So you can see what I'm doing here. That's the heat exchanger. And there I've got a light. That's This is the down downstream from the, uh, the impeller. And uh, this tube holds all the, the crap inside. So I'm using a mirror just to inspect. This is Eva's mirror. And just using that tin spec and these pair of tweezers to pull out all the bits of the impeller. Um, so you can see I've got one piece of impeller so far. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. And then I had to obviously disconnect the Jubilee clip, tap out all the bits and pieces. Uh, but yeah, I think I might reattach it now and give it a go. Let's see. These are actually, it's from a surgical kit. Um, it's really handy being a doctor when it comes to these things. So I've had to fish these out, these little smashed pieces of the impeller, put, fish them out um, of the, uh, you know, the tributary for the impeller housing itself. So yeah, unbelievably difficult task. And it would be very easily fixed if you just put a strainer. See that black pipe in front of you now? If you just put a strainer in the middle of that, um, if that was possible, then it would just save uh, about four hours of work in the blistering heat that I've just done. Um, but yeah, anyway, we got there in the end. So on my ship, the uh, the genset seacock is here. So that lets the water in to the system that we've just been looking at, right? So it lets the water in and there. But you could do all this effort 
and really screw up if you didn't open this strainer and fill it with seawater because that is above the waterline. Nobody tells you that. So, yeah, that's the tough way to learn is that you do it all over and then boom. And what I haven't shown you is as well on that impeller that I've just reinstalled, I, I covered it, I got Eva to cover it in um, washing up detergent, you know, the green stuff, we call it furry liquid in the UK, just to make it a little bit more slippery. Uh, when it goes in makes it easier and it's better for it when it's dry so yeah we're just going to fill this up with water now and uh, hopefully bob your uncle now with the morning after having had uh, problems all night uh, basically i was up at four in the morning uh, trying to fix the generator because after i put a new impeller in it was telling me it was it shut down the generator it had an automatic switch that basically shut itself down telling me there wasn't enough raw water um so what i did was uh, I tried something totally different, which was the the water, sea water strainer was above sea level, and I simply just moved it down, and that makes it easier for the impeller rather than drawing air and water. It was just drawing loads and loads of water. In fact, the pressure was much more, and it's been working perfectly now. Um, we have no problem since. So, I don't think that's a um, an installation problem from the factory, but because they don't foresee the amount of growth and the you know the barnacles and stuff that can grow inside the pipes and just the dirt over time. Um, and I think I found the same with the aircon too. So, you know, having slightly bigger diameter pipes or just replacing the pipes might probably be a solution. But in this instance, I've lowered the, the seawater strainer for the generator and it's done the job, thank God. You can no doubt see behind me. Pretty, pretty incredible uh, view. Sailing north uh, from just uh, just along the Pacific coast of Mexico, of course. And uh, we've, as always, we've had an adventure. Eva's at the helm behind me. Um, it's very difficult for the camera to see. We've got some friends come along for the ride. Some dolphins up my bow here. So I'm just going to shut up and, and show you a little bit of what it feels like to be here. We've got about 13 knots of wind and 50 apparent sailing at 50 apparent wind hold. So have a look at this. Dolphins are coming in here. 
on the left. We've got three tuners, three Benitos this morning. And here the dolphins come in. You can see them hopefully on the camera. This happens quite a lot. Never gets boring. There he is, or she. You can see I used the dinghy as a, a fishing rod holder as well. And a little trick. So we, we also leave the brush down because that whole area gets covered in, in tuna blood. So we, anytime it rains, first thing we do, get out on deck, clean the decks. So we've got six knots of true wind and this is what we can do with it. And at this very moment, I'm also filling up the tanks with fresh water. So I'm gonna drop the anchor soon. And you'll notice how bad and dirty the dinghy is. Uh, all those shells and barnacles, I'm gonna to have to take them off. And that's what happens when you go into a lagoon or a mixture of fresh and salt water. They, barnacles and wildlife are <laughs> fighting, fighting for their survival. Very light wind sailing it's between six and nine and ten occasionally. And what I've done for those that aren't very savvy in sailing, there we go, I've got my wind hold. So it'll try and hold uh, 60 degrees apparent. Now I can tell it to come down a bit lower, and that's fine. Um, when you have enough wind, that's good, but when your wind speeds start to get really low, you're better off just to keep it on a reach. So just about get away with this. I'm actually, as you can see, trying to go over this direction. And, but as the wind street speeds drop, you're better off to bear away from the wind so that you can keep, keep sailing rather than motoring. It's nice to keep that engine off. And Eva is keeping an eye for plastics in the ocean, but here we go. We've got a, another customer just coming to say hi. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep, there you go. Right next to us here. Just interested to learn some navigation. 